If you remember back to our deep learning introduction, recurrent neural networks, or RNNs, are good at finding patterns in sequences of data and predicting what comes next. Well, some recommendation problems can be thought of in those terms. We call them session-based recommendations. Let's give you a couple of examples. Let's say you're shopping on Amazon or something. If you're not logged in, then making recommendations to you is really hard. We don't know who you are, so we don't know what your past history is on the site or what your past interests are. We can keep track of your session, though, as you browse the site using the same browser window. Perhaps you've decided to learn how to speak Klingon, because for some reason you've decided that would be a useful life skill. In fact, it's not, but let's just make it interesting. Perhaps the first book you look at is How to Speak Klingon, so that's the first thing in your clickstream. So at this point, literally the only thing our recommender system knows about you is that you looked at the book How to Speak Klingon, but at least that's something. Maybe you didn't like the reviews on this book or something, so you moved on to another book you found, Shakespeare's Hamlet, translated into Klingon. Yes, this really exists. So at this point, we can say your clickstream consists of these two items. It is a sequence of clicks, one on How to Speak Klingon, and a second on Klingon Hamlet. If you wanted to make a recommendation at this point, a reasonable thing would be to try to predict what someone who just viewed these two items in this order might look at next. That is, you'd like to make a recommendation based on the sequence of things you've looked at previously. Predicting sequences is what RNNs do, which is why they are a natural fit for this sort of problem. Perhaps the most likely thing for a user to click on next is the Klingon Dictionary, which is, of course, the definitive reference for the Klingon language. Maybe the user clicked on that because our RNN recommended it, and hopefully they then purchase that item and move on with their life. So this particular session is over, and this session's clickstream consists of these three books. There is a data set called the Rexis Challenge 2015 data set that contains data exactly like this you can play around with. Another application of session-based recommendations based on clickstreams is streaming video sites such as YouTube or Vimeo. Again, if you're not logged in, all we know is the sequence of videos you watch. But we can still use that sequence to recommend what you should watch next. That's the sort of thing RNNs are for. Maybe you're watching videos from Sundog Education's amazing YouTube channel, because who doesn't? Anyway, the sequence of videos you watch from our channel can all be considered part of a clickstream as well. And the problem of recommending what to watch next based on the videos you watched previously in your session works exactly the same way as the e-commerce clickstream problem. The paper that describes using RNNs for making session-based recommendations has the creative title of Session-Based Recommendations with Recurrent Neural Networks. You might notice Netflix in the list of authors, but the author actually took a job at Netflix in between producing this work and when it was published. Netflix didn't really have anything to do with it. But it's a good example of how doing interesting research in recommender systems can land you a job in a company you love. You can find a legitimate free copy of this paper on the internet if you want to go into more depth. This paper is just from 2016, and I considered making it a bleeding edge alert topic because it is so new, but really it's just some minor twists on RNN, which are by now a proven technology. The world of deep learning is moving so quickly that research from 2016 really can't be considered bleeding edge or even leading edge at this point. We're in exciting times here. Mostly the paper concerns itself with how to tweak RNNs to work well with session-based clickstream data. If you remember, RNNs are rather complicated beasts. Instead of simple neurons, they depend on more complex structures such as LSTM, or in our case, GRUs, gated recurrent units. This gives the network an internal hidden state within each unit that must be maintained. GRU gates learn when and by how much to update that hidden state within each unit. Because the paper relies on GRUs with some customizations for the recommendation problem, the technique is sometimes referred to as GRU for rec. A simplified view of the architecture looks like this. This represents the processing of a single event in the clickstream. We start with the item that was just viewed and coded as a 1 of n, and that goes into an embedding layer that in turn leads into multiple GRU layers. We've represented it as a single block here in the interest of space, but in practice there can be many GRU layers in the middle here. There can also be many feed-forward layers after the GRU layers. These are just more traditional neural network layers that don't involve fancy GRUs. And finally, we get scores on all of the items, from which we can select the items the deep network thinks is the most likely to be viewed next in the clickstream. There are a few other twists on RNNs that the authors made for the recommender use case. 
they feed data into the network in a different way than you would, for example, feed in words from a sentence. Basically, multiple sessions are grouped together, and all of their first items are fed in together, then all of their second items, and so forth. They call this session parallel mini batches. They also sample the output, because in most recommender systems there are a large number of items, and it's computationally prohibitive to look at every item every time when you want a recommendation right now based on what the user just clicked on. Finally, they experiment with specific loss functions for training and settled on two of them, Bayesian Personalized Ranking, or BPR for short, and TOP1, which is a new loss function the authors developed specifically for this application. Now, one thing I've learned repeatedly in my career is that simpler solutions tend to be better, and Groove4Rec is far from simple. Before I would adopt a technology like this, I would really have to be convinced that it offers substantially better results than simpler alternatives do. There are other ways of making recommendations based on session data. This problem was around long before RNNs were. You can just treat the items in someone's session just like somebody's set of past movie ratings or whatever, and use item-based KNN or collaborative filtering to recommend things that are similar to the stuff they clicked on already. That doesn't take the order of the clicks into account, but in practice, that information isn't always that important. And if you dig into the paper's results, they were able to get slightly better results from RNNs than they did from item-based KNN, but it wasn't a dramatic difference. Nor was it evaluated with online real people, so more experiments would have to be run to say if it's really a superior approach or not. There is a real cost to deploying something like this into a production system. If it starts producing bad recommendations, who will understand the algorithm well enough to be able to tune it and correct it? How much hardware will it take to power a system this large and complex? And what happens when that hardware breaks? How long does it take to produce recommendations for a given session? And how does that affect the page render time for the website it's integrated into? That last concern could be enough to kill the project in itself. My point is that systems like this are definitely worth learning about and evaluating, especially since deep learning seems to be where all the current research is heading, and we want to take advantage of that. But there are practical considerations that must be made, and a complex system should never replace a simpler one that works just as well. You're the one that will be woken up at 2 a.m. when something goes wrong with it, remember. <laughs>